In this video, we're gonna go through the steps that I take to go from this, a concept captured on an SD card, to this, a native 38 inch print from my Fujifilm GFX100S. So if you watched my previous video about owning a medium format digital camera, you'll, you'll know that one of the big reasons for me of owning that medium format is the ability to offer my clients and supporters the best quality prints that I can possibly do. And I think printing your images is incredibly important, especially these days, because people are taking around the world millions, billions of photos a day, uploading them to social media, their websites and things, but it's that physical contact with an image that you've created, you've crafted, or somebody else has created and crafted, you know, they put their energy and love into that image and you might well appreciate it so much that you wanna buy a copy of it. And so that's why I think printing is important. And so I love printing my images and whether that's at home on my dodgy old Epson A3 Plus printer or as we'll do shortly, um, sending our images off to a professional print house um, to get a larger format print. And stay tuned because at the end of this video or somewhere in between, uh, I'm gonna do a giveaway. And so if you like free stuff, give this video a quick like, maybe subscribe, just saying. Now I've chosen two images from a recent trip to North Wales to do some printing of. So let's go into the computer and we'll start going through the processes that I would take to get those images printed to the best quality we possibly can. Now Lightroom is obviously where I would do my basic raw processing. So that's lifting any shadows, uh, dropping any highlights that I think are overdone. And then uh, we can either in here, we, if we're looking at a building, we can either use the guided lines to straighten up any edges, or I've got software elsewhere that can do that as well if I need to. Now I don't do too much um, over processing in Lightroom. And also for things like dust spots, I'll actually go into Photoshop to do that because I think the tools available within Photoshop are, all, are a lot more accurate and a lot more precise. I'll also use Photoshop, the, the tools within there, to get rid of things that I really don't need in the image. You know, if someone's discarded some litter or something, that clearly doesn't need to be within the image. That wasn't my vision, so it needs to go. So I've already checked for dust spots uh, on this image here and the other image that we'll work on as well. But at the corner, oh, sorry, at the edge of this image here, you can see there's a couple of branches coming in from a, a bush that's closer to the frame but, but that wasn't intended to be included. So I'll use the patch tool. I find the patch tool really useful for this kind of thing. We'll select that and that's easy enough to clone out and get rid of. Now if I'm creating a, a black and white image, my preferred conversion software is Silver Effects, um, Silver Effects Pro from Nick Collection. And within that, I've, I've gone ahead and created my own set of presets to apply, depending on the image I've created. Um, you know, male portrait, landscape, urban landscape, those kind of things that I might take, uh, and I've created my own presets for that. And then once a, a preset has been laid over the image, it's just a case that then there, there's lots of tools that I can use to just refine that image until I've got it to how I want it to look ready for printing. Now, there's a few things that we need to do or we can do that are going to give you the best chance of getting the best images and not something, you know, a nasty surprise that you get back from the printers and go, well, I didn't send that. So firstly, it's the image we take. Remember the old adage, you can't make a silk purse out of a sow's ear or similar, more unsavory uh, metaphors. If you're spending good money on good printing, then send a good image. A blown out highlight will always be a blown out highlight. Secondly, make sure that the images you see on your screen, the colors you see on your screen, are the same colors and image that your printing supplier will see. That means calibrating your monitor. It's not necessarily expensive and progress has made the process a lot simpler, a lot. Now I'll link below to the calibration tool that I'll use and, and please, you know, at the end of the video, feel free to link through to that if you want to think about buying one. And thirdly, ICC profiles. Now ICC profiles are little packets of information that tell your computer what the colors, 
should look like, the image should look like on the media that you choose at your printing supplier. You'll need to assign an ICC profile to your image before you send it to the print house so that the final reproduction that you get back is as close as possible to the image that you see on your screen. I say as close as possible because computer screens and print media use light in different ways. Computer screens will obviously backlight, so the, the light is shone through the screen outwards, projecting it towards you, whereas a print, a print media has to have light reflected, so it has to hit the print before you can see an image. You can't see an image in a dark room. You have to have light, hits the image, we can see what we're looking at. So your chosen print supplier, your print house, or um, your paper supplier, if you're printing from home, will have somewhere on their website uh, a download section where you can download the ICC profiles to the chosen media that you want to print on. So from that download section, choose which media type you're likely to want to print on, uh, download the ICC profile and store it in your ColorSync library. Stick with me, I haven't forgotten about the giveaway. Don't forget to give this video a like, subscribe, just saying, just in case. So a quick note about sharpening your images. We often sharpen our images for not only for screen display, but definitely for printing. And when we actually do the sharpening for print, it can look on screen, it can look a little more extreme than we would like it. But trust me when I say that when it comes to actually the print coming back, that isn't reflected the same way. Now there's various ways to do this. Um, the one that's worked for me forever and a day is a simple high pass filter. So all I do is I create another layer of the main image. Then I'll go into filters, other high pass, and I'll usually set a radius of around about two pixels. Um, sometimes it's a little more, depending on how much detail is within the image, but this way I find that we're not affecting any areas that don't need to be sharpened. So for instance, the sky does not need sharpening. If we put sharpening and too much sharpening onto the sky area, that's just going to end up creating noise uh, and distortion within the image that we don't need. Now, if I'm doing a black and white conversion, I'll actually do the sharpening to the image before doing that black and white conversion. And this is because I'll often add grain or similar to my image within that conversion. And I don't want that grain sharpened. I just want the image behind that effect sharpened. So once the image looks how we want it to and we're happy with it, the next stage is to soft proof. And this is where those little packets of information, the ICC profiles, are going to come in very handy. So basically, soft proofing means that we are going to get a representation on our computer screen of what the final image should look on our chosen printed media. So in Photoshop, we select View, Proof Setup, Custom. Now from the pop-up box, we go to the drop-down menu in Device to Simulate, and you scroll down until you find the ICC profiles that you've just saved. So here's my print space collection all together. By selecting the media type that you want the final image to be printed on, your screen will now reveal what the final print should look like. In rendering intent, you can choose either perceptual or relative. And for black and white images that I'm using, um, I'll stick to perceptual, basically because perceptual will hold shadow detail more effectively. And of course, with black and white images, uh, it's all about shadows and highlights and gray tones. Next, we always keep the black point compensation checked and leave the simulate paper and black ink options unchecked. Clicking the preview box will show us the difference between what the output on the media should look like and what we've currently got on screen. And so at this point, we've got the option to add another further adjustment layer and make any adjustments until our preview is more akin to what we were expecting when a print is produced. So the next stage, when we're happy with how that uh, proof looks, is that we need to convert the standard RGB file that we've been working with to the output profile, the ICC profile that we've downloaded. We need to actually assign that to the file to send to the print house. To do this, we click Edit, Convert to Profile, and then we simply input the same settings we used on our preview, the proof viewing, and click OK. Now remember, before we send the file off for printing, 
we want to save as our new file with its new profile. We don't want to overwrite that master image that we've been working on so hard. So I need to send this to the print space as a JPEG. So I need to flatten this image. I need to convert to an 8-bit image and then I can save as a JPEG, ready to send to the print house. And then, once we're happy with the final image, we've flattened it, we've saved it as a JPEG, we can then upload it to our chosen print supplier, let them do their magic, and wait for it to come back to us. And if we see here, here's the one of the downsides of having a medium format, large format print done. Each print is costing over £100. Now, of course, I joke about the cost of these prints being a downside. You see, this is a digital medium format print. It's a native size. Each of these images is over 38 inches wide. And they're actually a bit smaller than native because I cropped a bit off the bottom, if you'd notice, in the editing. Just for a comparison of scale, the, the print below is actually printed on Hanamula A3 Plus paper, just so you can kind of get an idea of the scale of how big a native print from a Fujifilm GFX 100S is. But the quality speaks for itself. That black and white conversion that I've done and that grain, the overlay that I've added, just takes off that harshness of what could be quite a sharp digital image. The prints are immaculate and quite clearly they've been handled with great care and professionalism with, by the people at the print space. Now talking of the good people of the print space, they've been kind enough to give me a code for you to get 50% off of your first order with them, up to a maximum value of £50. So I'll leave that code and the link in the description below. And then of course there's the giveaway. And the giveaway is these two prints. I will give away one print each to two different people. All you've got to do, if you would like a chance of winning one of these, is like this video and leave in the comment section below which one you would like. Would you like the church image or the power station image? Uh, if you like, I will sign the images and I will draw two names from the list below uh, on the 1st of December, 2021. If you're watching this video after the 1st of December 2021, then I'm sorry, but if you subscribe to future videos, I'm pretty sure there'll be more giveaways in the near future. Now, if you are one of the two lucky people to win these, um, I will message your comment. I will reply to your comment below, so keep an eye out for that. We'll message each other so I can find out where to send those prints. And like I say, I'll send them anywhere in the world. I'm quite happy to do that. Thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you again in the very near future.